Hi, and welcome to ArcSight Investigate. In this demo, we'll go through various aspects of search within ArcSight Investigate. Typically, there are three ways of searching, full text, field-based, and hashtag searches. We'll start this demo with full text search. I'm going to type in my search phrase here, and I'm going to search for activities around John Z. Notice as I type John Z, I get a series of suggestions of potential fields that I could use for field-based search. Source username, destination username, any usernames, and we'll explore some of this as we go through field-based search later. For now, I'm just going to type in John Z. I've also already chosen a field set, and I've set my time range for a time period where I know I have data. I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And what's going to happen is my results will load here inside of a grid. One thing of note is that while I type John Z in all lowercase, we are seeing values where my case does not match the result set. That's one of the benefits of full text search, is that I can have a case insensitive search here. A few things of generalized search is we can offer a range selector and choose a specific time window for those events. Here we're seeing I've chosen from four o'clock to five o'clock. Now I'm just seeing those events related to that. And John Z may be referenced in a source username still. So you can narrow your search by quite simply dragging this to the window of time that you would like. This might be handy if you see a significant spike in your analysis. You'll also know that I have nearly 1800 records for this time window I've selected. If I click this X here, my time window will be reset and I'll get the original results for the entire window of time. Next I'll click New Search. We'll see a new search populated in the left panel called Search 2, also in the title bar. Here I see a pencil as I hover over, and I can change the name of this search to be something more descriptive. I'm going to call this ticket 1234 to represent the ticket I'm working on. We'll see that this has been updated, and we'll see this reflected in the side panel. Next up, I'll adjust my field set and time window. Here I've chosen the firewall field set, the common field set used for investigations involving firewall traffic. In this case, I'm searching for an IP address, and I'll start to type it in. As I type, I start to get suggestions for fields that may be relevant, first a floating point. And then as I move forward in typing the IP address, it starts to suggest IP address fields. Notice that there are a variety of address fields in the investigate schema, and I may not know where this value would be found, so I'm going to just choose any IP. Effectively, this will search all IP addresses in the investigate schema for this value, without me having to type in source address equals or destination address equals, or know where in the schema I'm looking for this IP address field. So I'll find this anywhere that this address exists. As I look at the results set, and I can scroll through, we see that sometimes the value is exhibited in what looks like the, to be the destination translated address. Um, and it could be in other fields as well. And as we continue to scroll to the right, we will see that this is also found sometimes in the source address field. Another thing that you can do inside of the grid is there are spinners on the left side. And you can spin these down and it will show you your values here kind of quickly. So you can use this and you can cl collapse and expand these as you see fit. And this may also be another way that you might use the grid to get more detail. And here I've initiated a new search and set my time range already. I'll click in the search box and press the pound key. And I'll get a list of preset searches available to me. Those with the preset here on the right side are those that have been defined inside of the investigate system and are available for some common search criteria. In addition, I have my searches available to me, those that I've saved here as part of my session searches. I can use these searches independently or combine them with other search logic. In this case, I'm just going to look for failed logins. As I click failed logins and click search, the search will initiate. As I hover over failed logins, we'll see that the query is actually doing a category behavior equals authentication verify, and category outcome is a failure. This eliminates the need for a user to have detailed knowledge of how authentication events are captured or logged by various systems. In this case, we're seeing a few events that appear to be SSH related, but others have no detail besides operating system. So we'll scroll to the right, and we'll see that these are a variety of deny actions, some associated to Unix systems, others to Microsoft Windows, 
As we continue to scroll to the right, we'll see in the name field some more details as to why these failed. Uh, some failed just for password issues, others for accounts that are disabled. The user doesn't require knowledge of all of these various types of login failures and the details in order to query for this detail. They can simply use the failed login query and find all authentication failures as a starting point. If necessary, they could add additional query logic to further refine this search and limit this to, for instance, Windows events or Unix events or other systems of interest. And this is the benefit of the hashtag search, is quick access to common searches for analysts without the need to have knowledge of system and how events are parsed or handled, and no detail understanding except that you want failed logins. How that's captured by Microsoft, Windows, or other systems in your environment are irrelevant. And that's the hashtag search.